I think this is probably a somewhat easy question, right? Where did American savings go? Um, you know, during the 19, everyone was able to save because no one was doing anything. Everyone was, for the most part, stuck, unless you were in, like, the South and you were free, right? But... Um, for the most part, everyone was stuck around the globe. So it's not just America, it's everyone, right? Um, and so, yeah, everyone had all this money. And then as soon as everything was lifted, they instantly went out, started buying properties as far away from where they were stuck, I'm telling you, right? Buying cars, all the things that they missed, right? The retail therapy to kind of cope with the experience that they had just gone through, right? Um, then also, if we add in inflation, things start to get super crazy, bro, All right? So yeah, this is where American savings went. It went instantly within a year uh, to the point where no one is going to have any money by next month. I think next month is like the end of the average person's money they saved from the 19, okay? Um, while also thinking these two things here, the average person doesn't have more, doesn't have enough money saved in their account to, to like um, you know, deal with a $1,000 emergency, right? But all right, let's go and check this out, guys. Let's see what the, uh, the experts say. In 2022, the American personal saving rate fell to a low not seen since the Great Recession. I think a lot of people have been just kind of cooped up during the pandemic times and now we're transitioning plus inflation. So it definitely has been a little bit harder. Economists right. look at this savings dynamic in a sort of benign light. Savings accrued over the early part of the pandemic and that's starting to get spent down. But on the personal level though, that's not a pleasant process. This real-time dip in saving is stressing out a lot of people. 70% say they are stressed about their personal finances, and that includes 57% of people earning $100,000 or more. Guys, if you're making more than $100,000, um, a lot of what's happening in your life could could be mitigated, right? Um, like, just because you start, like, as soon as you pass that six-figure mark, that doesn't mean that you need to also up your lifestyle. Like, I understand you want to do something nice for yourself because you're starting to make some money, but don't allow that to to happen in your life if, if you if you really like your life in the long run let's say uh, because you honestly could have the ability to be putting away a lot of money consistently if you just don't spend like you actually make if that makes any sense Chris. and the main factors contributing to financial stress for the six figure set include inflation economy-wide instability, interest rates, and a lack of savings. The basic necessities of life substantially burden your income. It becomes difficult to save. That said, Americans are sitting with a lot more savings than they had in the past. According to bank deposit records, Americans as a whole are still better off than they've traditionally been. How much depends on which side of the income distribution you're on. Right. Regardless, Americans across the board were drawing down those savings in the final quarter of 2022. So why did Americans stop saving? And what effect will that have on this massive group of people that we call the economy? My name is Michael, but the interwebs know me as the bougie budgeter because I make money easy. I am currently based in Phoenix, Arizona. The majority of US households use bank accounts. Michael represents one of these households. I do take about 8% of my total um, income, and that is to my 401 contributions. My company matches at 8%. I also try to save an additional 15%, as well as another about 10% of my take-home pay I put towards my investing goals as well. So my personal savings rate after my take home, I shoot for about a 15% and I have my That's solid. My savings auto deposited right into my high yield savings account because if I, Oh, she knows money too. I do not do that, then I will All accidentally right. spend Respect. it and I am a recovering overspender and that was my solution to um, not overspending. Collectively, Americans have trillions more in savings than they did prior to the pandemic. For a broad mm -hmm. swath of, of Americans, their financial condition is still probably better than it was pre-pandemic. But those cash cushions are deflating for the first time in years. The personal saving rate reflects how much income Americans hold onto after their taxes and regular spending. It's basically just the amount of that that is not 
consumed. Much of that income, particularly for what I define broadly as underserved communities, tends to go toward basic necessities like housing, food, health care, transportation. In February 2023, the personal saving rate was hovering around 4.5%. That's compared to a long-term average of just under 9%. You would see spikes around the dates when those stimulus checks were sent out and those were not getting spent. Of course, the other thing that happened early in the pandemic is people were not spending money on the things that they were accustomed to spending on. As inflation has set in, the monthly saving rate has taken a tumble. This rate only describes one month of earning and saving. Take a look at the total deposits held by customers at banks, and you'll see that there's way more value in people's accounts than any time before the pandemic. A lot of people would point They never want to be back in that situation again. Point to excess savings that occurred early in the pandemic, something like two to two and a half trillion dollars in savings above what we would have otherwise expected were saved by American households. Over the past nine to 12 months, that stash of savings has eroded. It's probably somewhere in the one to one and a half trillion range. You had folks across the country accumulating a bit of a war chest of savings, and that really has helped to buoy the economy particularly in a place like the U.S. where consumption is such a big part of GDP. The top half of earners have over $1 trillion in excess savings. That's nearly three times as much as the bottom half, according to federal economists. But they believe the lower half still collectively holds hundreds of billions in excess savings. By their count, it breaks down to about $5,500 per household. A note here, this may not mean that you have $5,000 in spare cash laying around. It may have gone to pay off that amount in student debt, or a mortgage, or a car, or towards your retirement. 37% of Americans have not touched their pandemic savings, and 45% of Americans either haven't touched it or have taken out a little bit, but the majority is intact. Only 17% of Americans have pretty much exhausted their pandemic savings. Though that cushion may be beginning to shrink. But guys, that's really easy. Inflation and the implications for that Inflation. across categories, whether it be food, whether it be fuel, whether it be rents, you're seeing cost inflation that eats into clearly people's current income, but also to the extent they have savings, it also eats into those savings because everyday things are just more expensive. And if you think about in a pre-pandemic world, when a typical black family had about five days of liquid savings there's not a whole lot of financial slack in the system to be able to weather periods of time without income. Economists believe that the extra savings have so far kept people spending and the country from recession. At the same time, a huge swath of the population is living paycheck to paycheck, according to recent surveys. Take a look at our poll of a thousand people. There are a lot of people over the hundred thousand mark that For the most part, all say, a lot of them are saying that they are living paycheck to paycheck. Again, they're living above their means or they're living at their means. Don't live at your means if you're making that much money, bro. You don't have to. You don't have to. You're choosing to. Across the country, what you'll find is that 69% are pessimistic about the current situation in the economy and they're pessimistic about the future. That's an all-time high. I think the consumer is doing pretty well. The concern I have is that the whole world is talking about this recession that we're going to have, which we were supposed to have last year, then we were supposed to- Like this, this is one of these guys who are obviously most likely six, seven figures, right? Who are talking about, don't worry, we're not broke. Bro, The America's broke. Regular America's broke, bro. Yeah, it, it feels like- and if, you, if you're hearing people are begging for a recession, right, it's because people are tired of being strangled by inflation. Just because it's not affecting you or most likely your friends, it doesn't mean that it's not affecting everyone else extremely negative. We're supposed to have the first quarter of this year. Now we're supposed to have it the second half of this year. Sometimes when you scare people enough into thinking there's going to be a recession, they will stop consuming and it can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Federal economists we, note yeah, that the low interest rates of recent that. years are backstopping many Americans. Yeah, yeah, people don't want to get out of their, their golden handcuffs, guys. Absolutely not. Like, why would they? Listen, if you were able to get a loan for, I don't know, $400,000 to, to put towards a house at 2%, 3%, who, who in their right mind would get rid of that and you bought your house at a, at a fraction of what it would be worth today? Who in their right mind would give up their 3% for 
for what is it now close to eight percent bro who would do that no one yeah absolutely the interest rates of of old um did this economists note that the low interest rates of recent years are backstopping many americans yeah when this rate goes to zero the cost to loan out cash declines like free and money you can see the effect playing out on this other chart personal interest payments sank below longer term trend growth with these excess savings the economy remains strong but they expect those stockpiles to dwindle rapidly these dynamics are observable around the world nearly all developed countries have declining household savings back in the states trouble in the regional banking sector may affect the future direction of interest rates the fed's trying to slow down the economy that reduction in lending by regional banks might very well do that work for them which means that we may be near the end of interest rate hikes. The Fed's interest rate can affect how much money you make from saving. When the rate goes up, putting money away becomes more valuable. But if it goes down, that could change what your account offers in terms of interest. When you are in a rising interest rate environment, savings rates do tend to lag that process. So right now the Fed has rates close to 5%. I doubt that very many people can get a 5% savings rate on a typical savings or checking account. It's a lot happening. Bro, Citizen is offering close to 7%, by the way, if you guys wanted to know. All right, Citizens absolutely is doing that. But all right, it's good. Right now. Well, they were doing it. Jobs, there's pretty recently. so much happening that it's okay if you're not having a 15% savings rate, but just as long as you're starting somewhere. There are many different ways to save your money, but different methods can generate returns for you as a saver in the form of interest. There's no easier way to save money than to have money taken out of your paycheck before you get it and have it go into a retirement plan that's either getting a tax deduction plus tax deferral, or it may just be tax-free for life if it's a Roth. But either way, the money's taken out first Cash stored under your mattress effectively delivers a negative return, at least. Yeah, but then they can't take your money. Like, I get what you're saying, bro. I, I listen. I, I utilize banks absolutely, but cash under your money, cash, cash under your mattress, um, they can't take from you. I'm just gonna say, it. listen. Um, there are some people who get their accounts frozen for various reasons, and if you have a rainy day fund of cash, which which is probably an intelligent thing in certain times, right? Um, that's perfectly great. Keep some money around your house in a safe, right? Um, or in your office or somewhere, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. When the U.S. has inflation, <laughs> like, does it benefit rise, you? Not really. Money is worth less. But, when it comes to your standard checking account, big banks like Wells Fargo, TD, Chase, and Bank of America. Bank of BlackRock. It's no longer called Bank of America, guys. It's called the Bank of BlackRock. Routinely offer low returns. By contrast, high yield savings accounts can deliver much more in interest. The national average is incredibly low. I'm high yield all the way. Right, absolutely. for any dollars that I'm trying to save. I suggest always any short-term savings, any long-term savings, I'm not a fan of leaving in a savings account, but anything that's between six months to 24 months, leave it in a high-yield savings account. Uh, sounds like she's talking about a certificate. Um, but yeah, I guess, I mean, but I mean, that's not really accessible. There are accessible accounts that do offer um, like a solid uh, return, but I think, I don't know if she's conflating the two or I don't know. High yield savings account and a certificate of deposit. The national savings interest rate was less than 1% in 2023, but some high yield accounts were netting 4%. That's much better than in the yeah, yeah, synchronies and no, bro. past, but still lower than inflation. Absolutely not. You may be not. shocked that you're still getting 0.1 or 0.3% and you can easily get north of 4% without taking any undue risk on your cash. That's a game changer. Right. But not every bank offers a high yield option and not everyone seeks them out. Roughly six million. Yeah, because people generally don't have financial literacy. Like even though we live in a system where FICO basically runs our life, if you speak to the average person about FICO in any, in any depth, right? They don't understand how not to have a credit score under 800. Like they don't grasp it at times, right? Uh, it's, trust me when I say it's easier than you think, guys. Just don't don't utilize it or utilize it in small amounts. That's it, bro. I'm telling you, just credit is not a rocket science, but people tend to, um, you know, loan against it in 
like really, really hard times and not understand that that will ruin your life if you don't pay it back. Yes. A million Americans were unbanked in recent years. This means they don't use checking or savings accounts. The most common reasons were lack of funds or they simply don't trust banks. You've got to reset the thresholds to make sure banking is not burdensome to these individuals, particularly for folks who have lower income, lower net worth. To the extent that they are banked, their money sits in checking and savings accounts. I think it's probably the case that a lot of families are leaving some money on the table. A high yield account is going to also offer a better rate than you might get with a typical savings account. You might often have to have a larger balance in that account to qualify for the higher rate. I, yeah, like 5, 10, 15, 20. I had one of those moms who was also a money nerd just like me. And um, she had a high yield savings account back in like 2006 when this high yield savings rate was like 8%. Yeah. Banks are offering higher returns for yeah, two yeah, reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one, they're competing for your business. And number two, the interest rate hikes out of the Fed make it easier for them to lend to you at a favorable rate. Smaller banks often use this strategy to build their deposits. Even companies like Goldman Sachs have used this tactic, and companies like Apple are getting into the game as well. Other products like certificates of deposit can make your money work for you. I actually got my first CD by myself without my mom. I was like, you know what? I'm probably not gonna use this until I graduate and I'll let that mature. And I know that that rate is locked in, which is a lot different from a regular savings account where right. that rate is not locked in. A CD usually carries a higher interest rate, but it also has a fixed term. So your money's going to be uh, tied up in that product until the right. term ends. So there is a give and take there, but I think for a lot of households, if they have the cash to invest over a certain period of time, the CD is a really good option right now. But no matter how you get it done, saving at all is a good start. Compound interest is real. So Ooh. to the extent... <gasps> Guys, compound interest is... It's what will absolutely oh, change your tax bracket. Okay, listen. Um, these numbers may sound crazy, guys, but just listen. Hear me out for a second. Uh, Six hundred forty-eight thousand dollars. That's that's like the magic number, right? Like putting that putting that amount of money into like a um, um, like into something that's going to give you compound interest, right? I think that will probably puts you into like the million right in probably 10 years or something like that guys so just just understand putting in like a small amount of money every single month um so you can reach a uh, overall savings goal every single month uh it sounds absolutely crazy in this economy i am fully aware i'm just just i'm just explaining things right don't shoot the messenger right um but yeah so putting putting in a certain amount of money like what like maybe forty two thousand a year or something like something and it's guys it's gonna be painful i know it's painful right but that's how you set yourself up to just basically have the ability to live completely off of compound interest right um and that is again listen leave the money in there let it grow every single year you you know it gets to the point where you can actually start taking out you know, copious amounts of money on a yearly basis as a, as overall salary to yourself type of thing while leaving your main principal um, in there just growing and growing and growing and growing and living off that, just living off the interest, bro. Listen, that's the dream, okay? That's the absolute dream. Compound interest on a very large principal. Dent that you can put some amount away, even if it's below the threshold that you had set out maybe a year ago or two years ago when the environment looked very different, that's okay. Don't be hard on yourself. Saving a dollar today is still more than saving yeah, zero dollars right, today. Exactly. So if you can only start small, start small and let that habit grow, you're still doing amazing. Right. Like anything is better than nothing. And a lot of people just do nothing. But the reason why that is, is because of the times we're in, right? So this is a really terrible time to start even saving like any type of like real money uh, towards your future. So you don't end up being kind of forced to retire due to some type of age oriented thing. And you having nothing in your savings or you have a, a 401k with $50,000 and then they're just like, hey, have fun with your life. $50,000. Bro, that's not gonna 
it's not going to take care of you for the, for the rest of your life, guys. Right? So that's it. Save absolutely if you can. If you have the ability to save, make sure you're saving and putting putting away for uh, uh, for your uh, your future going forward, guys. Um, but all right, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day and enjoy your day thoroughly.